Thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. Locally produced food and eating healthy are big topics around the country, especially here in Vermont. Our farms and agricultural bounty are important reasons why Vermonters choose to live here. However, not everyone is able to easily purchase local farm products. Well, now there's a new initiative led by UVM. It is called Farm Fresh Food Boxes, and it's making it easier to access fresh and healthy local food throughout the state. To find out more, I'm joined by two leaders of the Farm Fresh Food Box program. Lisa Chase is the Natural Resources Specialist with UVM Extension, and she heads the Vermont Tourism Research Center. And Jane Kolodinsky is Director of the UVM Center for Rural Studies and the Chair of the Department of Community Development and Applied Economics. Welcome to both of you. Now, Jane, tell us a little bit about local food in Vermont. Who buys it, who doesn't? Well, actually, there are a lot of Vermonters that buy local food. Think back to maple syrup. People buy their annual gallon of maple syrup, or a lot of people access Pick Your Own. Where I think the disconnect comes is when we look at people who have the ability or wherewithal to access food either through community-supported agriculture or farmer's markets. So some people feel that it isn't their place or they feel that it's unaffordable. Why do you think that is? Um, I, you know, that's a really good question. <laughs> um, I th and we really believe it's a perception. Right. So if you, ha if you go to a farmer's market, clearly um, there is an extra trip that you have to take in addition to your weekly grocery shopping. Mm -hmm. And if you belong to a CSA, there's a huge upfront cost, typically, and there's a weekly extra trip. So those are some of the reasons why people might not access those, those uh, forms of direct-to-consumer local buying. Mm -hmm. And so Lisa, what's some of the research about local food going on around the state? There are a bunch of very interesting and important studies that are happening. Um, everything from looking at the economic impacts of local food to benefits for communities and environmental issues. As, as Jane mentioned, access to local food and opening up new markets is a very important topic that we're looking at through this um, farm Fresh Food Box project. And that's where we're looking at a new model that can benefit farmers, retailers, as well as consumers. We talked a little bit about consumers, but how does this benefit farmers? What's, what's the obstacle for farmers? So the idea with the Farm Fresh Food Boxes is it's opening an, up a new market. We don't want to um, necessarily take people who are already going to a CSA or going to a farmer's market and then take them and have them now buy it in a, in a retail outlet like a country store or general store or convenience store. The idea is to make the pie larger. So farmers benefit by having new customers and by increasing sales. Retail outlets such as general stores, country stores, and convenience stores, they benefit because now they can stock fresh produce in their store. And for consumers, hopefully we are attracting new consumers or consumers that wouldn't necessarily already be buying those fresh um, fresh local farm products, now they have easier access. All right, so let's take a closer look at how the Farm Fresh Food Box program works. Across the fences, Rebecca Gollin tells us more from Jericho. At the Jolly in Jericho, a steady stream of customers stop for gas and other items. It used to be called Big John's, we bought it and you know transformed it into one of our Jollies and it's been a you know, very successful store. A lot of local, and we get a lot of tourists you know, heading to the mountains. Signs here point customers to an item that might seem out of place at a convenience store. We have the sign up front, so a lot of people stop and read about it, and then they'll ask us questions and we'll go over it. It's a box of produce, similar to what you might get with a farm share or CSA. The difference is that these boxes are offered on a pay-as-you-go basis. The local thing's big for us, you know, we're a local company and we deal with local breweries and wineries and cideries and, you know, just getting the local products and hands, keeping the money in Vermont is definitely nice. This partnership is about as local as it gets. The produce comes from just down the road at Jericho Settlers Farm. It's a very diverse population that uses convenience stores, so you're going to reach people that you may not reach at like a farmer's market or through your CSA. Um, and so that's what we were curious to see how it would go. So we're always game for trying new things. <laughs> Farmer Krista Alexander says that being able to buy boxes weekly instead of a big payment up front and not having to commit for the whole season works well for some customers. 
Whether it will attract enough new customers to be feasible is still a question. And it's a question that researchers at the University of Vermont are working to answer. These farm fresh food boxes are part of a grant funded project that aims to expand the economy in rural areas by making it easier to get products to consumers. Convenience and choice are the way people do business. That's the American consumer. So how do we fit into that model? You know, UVM Extension's a, Hans Estrin is one of the researchers involved in the project. He helped pair up farms and convenience stores around the state with the goal of helping both groups expand their markets. The hope is that by boosting the economic success of these local businesses, the whole community will benefit. We're very curious, is this model kind of viable? Is this, you know, kind of a worthwhile new kind of direct market opportunity for farms and stores and for customers? And, you know, does it improve access in the way that we believe that it might? Researcher Lauren Greco developed tools to help farms and stores with data collection. The partnerships being established are crucial to the program's success. I think so much of um, whether or not this will be a successful model or not is going to come down to um, how well Extension works with these partners, um, which, which so far is kind of like the critical piece. And then in the future, how well these partners work with each other and um, the relationships they form that are outside of just kind of like the monetary exchange. After a small pilot last year, this is the first full season of testing the model. Order numbers have been increasing steadily, and interest is growing. Every Friday I send the store a list of what's going to be in the share for the next week's pickup, and um, they advertise it for that week and take the sales, and then they uh, let us know how many boxes have been ordered. On a Thursday, we pack them either Thursday afternoon or Friday morning, and they go to right to the store on Friday morning. It's a pretty easy process. You, you prepay for the box, we take your information, and then on Friday, you know, you come in once it's delivered, pick up any time on Friday, and swipe your gift card and go. For farmers, the chance to get more of their produce onto their neighbors' plates is appealing. Many of these farmers, one of their greatest heart wishes is to feed people around them. And it's their neighbors. It's not actually going 20, 30 miles away. It's going four miles away. That's the whole reason I started farming. I was looking to not only grow the food for myself in a way that I felt good about, but be able to provide that to the community as well. Back at the Jolly, the food boxes are being delivered. The customers who ordered them will pick them up during the day. Not everybody has time to go to the farm and, you know, be a part of the CSA. You know, we've had a lot of customers actually, you know, say they've left, you know, that membership because they weren't able to get up there every week. And Store manager Mike did. Trackham hopes that making it easier and more convenient for his customers to get fresh local produce will benefit the whole community. He knows the option will make it a little easier for at least one family he knows well, his own. I got a family of four, and for me to stop at a grocery store every day and to buy, you know, veggies that are either going to go bad or, you know, produce that's going to go bad, it's just not worth it half the time, where if you pick up one box, and it'll feed you for the weekend. Working together to give Vermont businesses a boost, these partnerships might just be the beginning of a fruitful friendship. We have a ways to go, but we would never get there if we don't experiment, and that's the key. And we'll never be able to experiment if people aren't working together with a common vision. If it's successful, it's definitely something that we would look at, you know, in other stores. And I know Meg, who's the director of food services, talked about using their products in our delis and featuring it in a salad or something. It's convenient and it's local. And this new way to shop for veggies might be coming to a store near you. In Jericho, I'm Rebecca Gowan with Across the Fence. Well, thanks, Rebecca. Back in the studio, I'm with two UVM professors who are leading the Farm Fresh Food Boxes program. Now, Lisa, um, where can consumers find these food boxes? We're currently working in four different places in Vermont. As you just saw, Jericho Settlers Farm is delivering boxes to 
the Jolly Store near them. They're also delivering boxes to the Jericho Century, Center Country Store. Mm -hmm. um, Footbrook Farm is working with Waterville General Store. And a little further south, we have Route 5, Route 5 Farm in Fairley, working with DD Country Supply, and even further south. Um, this one's just recently started up with these um, winter survival boxes. And this is High Meadow Farms, is working with the Putney General Store. Mm -hmm. And then we also, a little farther from Vermont, <laughs> in, in um, California and Washington State. Um, this is a multi-state research and extension project, and we're working with colleagues in Washington and California to um, develop some pilot sites there. Before we talk about that, I want to find out, how did you choose the Vermont sites? A lot of it was, uh, uh, you saw Krista's willing to right. experiment. A lot of it was finding a combination of a farm and a store, both of them willing to be guinea pigs, willing to try something a little new. And, and one other aspect is we intentionally wanted to go to communities where it might be um, in some cases a little harder to have easy access to fresh fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. And so let's, Jane, talk about the partnership with Washington and California. Why is this kind of collaboration necessary, and how does it work for this particular project? Well, in this particular project, we were looking at being a pilot in order to expand across the United States. And so Vermont is sometimes looked at our own little, as our own little microcosm, but you also have hu a huge state like California, and of course Washington, which has Washington State, mm -hmm. which is very rural once you get outside of the Seattle area. So we're looking at rural urban, we're looking at small versus large scale, and we're looking at the ability to make different kinds of matches between farmers, retail sites and consumers. Mm -hmm. And what about um, the growing season in Vermont? I mean, it's coming to an end. What, what does it look like going forward for the winter season? Ah, here's a, a big misperception in Vermont because we now have winter community supported agriculture shares. And as Lisa just said, we're going to have a survival box, mm -hmm. which will contain things like winter squash, potatoes, carrots, produce that lasts longer and has less less of a likelihood to spoil, so consumers can enjoy them for a longer period of time. Now in the Vermont sites, there are several different sites you mentioned, Lisa, around the state. Are there some that are performing better than others right now that you know of? Right now, I would say Jericho has, has been doing the best. Mm -hmm. It helps that they have two stores um, working with one farm. Right. And um, in Putney, things are just, just getting started with the survival box, but they've, um, they've been doing a survival box for a few years, and um, so we're, we're optimistic about how that will work out. I would say overall, in all of the, the farm store pairings, there's room for growth. That's, you know, this is research, so one of the aspects we're looking at is where is it most successful, what, and what are the challenges? And I think, you know, one of the challenges that we're dealing with now is, is getting the word out, helping people know these are available and encouraging them to try it out. And what I like about it too is that you know ahead of time, a week ahead of time, what's gonna be in the box. Mm -hmm. So I would imagine there's less waste um, of produce just sitting out for people to buy if you know what you're going to be getting in, in that box. And that was one of the reasons why we chose the Farm Fresh Food Box approach for um, more rural retail locations which have found it impossible to stop pro stock produce because of the spoilage factor. And we so appreciate the ability to be on across the fence to spread the word because it being a research and extension project there isn't a lot of marketing budget. <laughs> <laughs> and so where do you see this going in the future? Oh, um, well, we can see it expanding to other states. We can see it expanding within the state, more farmers, more um, retail locations, and perhaps expanded products. Maybe we can have um, bread in there or eggs in there or other farm fresh food, pro food um, products that consumers demand. Terrific. And so Lisa, how can farms, stores, and customers learn more about these food boxes? If, if um, farmers, stores, or consumers are interested, probably the easiest thing is just to contact me directly. Mm -hmm. um, my email address is lisa, L-I-S-A dot C-H-A-S-E at U-V-M dot E-D-U, and my phone number is 802-257-7967. As we mentioned, this is, you know, we're still in the experimental phase, the research phase, so um, we'll be doing this, uh, doing trials again next summer. 
and into the, uh, the um, fall and winter. And we're definitely interested in working with more farms, more st stores, and helping to spread the word with consumers. That's it is an exciting project. I think it sounds great. Thanks a lot for joining me today. Thank you. That's our program for today. I'm Judy Simpson. I'll see you again next time on Across the Fence. Thank you.